Hi, I'm Ann Hughes. I'm a director of IP development at Cadence Design Systems, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, automotive design um, for electronic components. And uh, it's a fast-growing industry. There's been a, a lot of uh, new um, applications of electronic components into the automotive industry. And as you know, it goes into things like rear-view cameras, uh, navigation systems, uh, parking systems, braking systems, and even now into the, the self-driving cars that everybody's talking about. Um, so clearly the consequences of a failure in a, uh, in a design that's going into a rear view camera is not that, not that catastrophic, but if it goes, uh, there's a failure in a component that goes into a braking system, it has much more dire consequences. So uh, there are safety standards, fu functional safety standards that need to be followed for uh, applications of, of electronics into the automotive industry. Uh, they're driven by a specification, an international specification standard uh, called ISO 26262. And uh, this goes into a lot of detail about the uh, management systems, development practices uh, that need to be followed and how to get certification for uh, designs that are going to be going into automotive applications. Um, some of the, the things to consider when you're doing this, it requires a lot of planning. This isn't like a standard design uh, where you just uh, create the design, do the testing, and put it out there. The, there's a lot more planning that goes into it, and it's a much more iterative approach to the design. Um, the, the application, uh, the end application of the design, uh, it really dictates the amount of functional safety that needs to be uh, certified for that design. Uh, within the ISO 26262 standard, uh, it's classified by ASA levels. Um, those are uh, automotive safety integrity levels, and they're uh, classified from A to D. And basically where that A to D comes from, those, those levels, uh, there's uh, two axes in terms of automotive safety. There's the severity of a potential injury and then the risk of harm. And as the risk of harm goes up and the severity goes up, the, the severity of a potential injury, then uh, things become more catastrophic. So you could draw lines this way and say these are ASL, D, ASL A, then ASL B, ASL C, ASL D uh, in terms of, of their level. So for ASL D, you clearly need a lot more planning. It takes a lot more effort to get certified at that level than it would for an ASL A, which has very very low uh, potential of risk or, or severity of risk. Um, the, the process of going through this, uh, you have to first plan for the, the amount of uh, safety diagnostics that are going to be in the design, and that's done uh, using an FMEDA, which is a Failure Modes, Effects, and Diagnostics Analysis. Um, and that helps drive the components that need to be added to the design. Uh, typically, there's an iterative process as you as you get feedback from that FMEDA to understand whether you need to add more capability to the design to account for it. And then, uh, once the design is completed, if you're uh, planning to have the the um, component or subsystem go to um, an ASL C or an ASL D level type of uh, application then you also have to do a fault injection simulation to prove out more quantitatively uh, that you've reached the level required for that ASL C or ASL D certification. So as you can see, there's a lot of planning and an iterative approach that goes into planning for uh, uh, automotive application and it needs to have a, a significant amount of forethought uh, in, in, in preparing for that uh, as you go through the design process. Again, this is Ann Hughes with Cadence Design Systems, and thank you for watching Whiteboard Wednesdays.